Good afternoon. This is Dr. Bill White again, and we showed you a video how the retrodiscal tissue is the area that is very highly vascular and is very loaded with nerve endings and is the area that produces the synovial fluid which actually feeds the disc in the spectrum, the center part of the disc in the, in the condyle and the fossa it takes so much pressure there's no nerve endings and no blood vessels in that tissue and it has to be fed constantly and so the retrodiscal tissue produces a synovial fluid which is very very slick and is loaded with nutrients and everything for these, this particular tissue and it injects into the upper and the lower joint space. Now I've got three cases here that showed they were having TMJ problem and all we did was level out the bite and break their lower jaw forward and we could stop the pain. Now one of them was well, two of them are quite different from that, and I want to show you them. And the first one is one like that, where we had a young lady who had a uh, anterior crossbite. The upper teeth were back behind the lower teeth and met in this area right in here uh, on her. Let me get this open to my pen here one time more and I want to back that up again this her upper anterior teeth close right in here and we put this little pad of acrylic and put it on her and then put some uh, spring pressure on the upper teeth and they were closing here and we made them close out in this area right here and we thought well this is real simple and we took the thing off and then her bite closed down in that position now I'll show you uh, also where she went to so here's where her lower jaw was and this is when we started we put this acrylic pad on the lingual side of these anterior teeth and so she bit on that and these teeth were not touching at all and we put some spring pressure in here and we shoved these front teeth over the top of those right there and uh, I'm gonna I think the next slide here will be where they were this is more or less when we finished we got her over there and lined them all up but we moved it over there and as soon as we got them over on the other side, just a few weeks later, she came down with a TMJ problem. These teeth were impinging on the lower teeth, and they caused the lower teeth to be pushed backwards. And as they pushed them backwards, it crowded the TM, the, the retrodiscal tissue didn't have much room back there and it crowded it up and it cut the blood supply down on it and it got inflamed and was very sore and she came in with this TMJ problem and I knew what was the matter on that case and so we proceeded to level this out and to take away the force that was pushing this back and opened this up and then we gradually went down with it maybe we we could strip the teeth a little bit and then put some tip in the upper teeth to make them come forward more and some backward tip in these and they would move backward and now she could close her teeth in here and it did not push the lower jaw back and it did not like here's the fossil back here, here's the condyle, 
and it wasn't pushing this condyle back into the retrodiscal tissue. And if you have watched that video on the, uh, dealing with the retrodiscal tissue, uh, you should look up the retrodiscal tissue and learn what it does. And then we went through, here's the way that the, the case, the teeth hit together, and there's where we brought it. And we and it made it hurt when we put these teeth over the front until we treated this lower jaw where it could fit under there without pushing it back and crowding this retrodiscal tissue. Uh, you're going to get tired of hearing me say retrodiscal tissue, but uh, that's where it is. Now, we had a little midline problem. We corrected that, and here's where it was when we started, and there's where it was after we finished and did the uh, movement of the teeth so they could close there without shoving, putting pressure on this going back into that retrodiscal tissue. Okay, and there's, uh, that's starting. Now, I think this is, uh, I'm not sure. This is, we, we had to move that forward to give us room for the lower so it doesn't push them backwards. And then we adjusted the teeth so that they took care of that and we could close that up. And so that's what we did in that particular case. And there it is, finished. Okay, uh, here's another case now. Uh, this is a very intelligent man who operated the computers in American Airlines and kept the, and they kept up the reservations for people all over the country, you know. And it was a very stressful job and his teeth met like this. I mean, they were, the bottom jaw was squeezed in underneath here, and he was suffering with temporal mandibular joint problems. He could hardly get enough. And uh, they can give you medicine and everything else, but if you don't go to the cause of the, of the pain, uh, these things are just a salve, like putting a, a, a a little patch over a, a boil or something. You got to go to the cause of the problem. And the cause of it was this mandible was trapped back. He could not move it forward. And every time he chewed right here, it pushed it into the retrodiscal tissue. And it was so painful, he had to take all this stuff to relieve the pain. And that's just a cover up. If you went to the cause of it, and that's what we did. Now you watch this cuspid right here, it's gonna go in that groove right there. And I'm gonna erase that and go back, and here it is in that groove. Now, <coughs> we leveled that bite out and brought his lower jaw forward. In other words, this point was over here, and now it's here. In other words, this moved up from the back. It was crowded, and we had plenty of room for it, and then the teeth that were crowded out had room to come in, and this lower jaw was further forward in his mouth and did not impinge on this retrodiscal tissue. And when we did that, he got over the pain that he was having with it. And he was in charge of a whole group of people over there that worked American Airlines. And he sent some other people in his staff that were having some joint pain in uh, for us to check with them. And, and I remember correcting one of them particularly. Let me look at, and here is his lower jaw when we started. And you watch this. In other words, this part is going to move out here. And... Uh, when we open the bite, you see his lower teeth, you can't even see them underneath there. So we raise these up, and we brought these upper lower ones down, and we leveled it out like that, and we moved 
it forward, and that solved this jaw joint problem where, say, the fossa was back in in this area where I can't draw back there, um, and the condyle was being pressed back here and crowding this retrodiscal tissue. And so when we freed the mandible up, it was not putting pressure on that, and he got over the TMJ pain. And that's why, I mean, I looked at some of these things and say, well, you put massage, massage this, it'll help it. You can put heat and you can put ice pack on it and then you can alternate heat and ice. It'll give you some relief. You can take some uh, anti-inflammatory medicine and sometimes it helps it. If it's just something that got damaged a little bit and it's inflamed, and uh, anti-inflammatory medicine might take care of it. But if it's something chronic where you're pressing the condyle into this retrodiscal tissue and you can patch it up and you can plaster and you can bathe it and you can massage it till you're blue in the face and it's still going to hurt and you can't do it. So you've got to go for what caused the pain in the first place. So we leveled the bite out and we brought his mandible forward. And so when we brought the mandible forward, it brought the condyle forward and got it off of the retrodiscal tissue, and the man was not having any problem. And so his TMJ problem went away. And that's, there he is after we got him leveled out. Now here's the upper. He had some bad crowns on those. And there it is after we finished. You see how much further forward those upper teeth are. We've got a little gap over here. We left it. We wanted to get this out. This is probably a more narrow tooth than the one over on the other side. And he'll have to have something done with this to close that space up right there. Now, here is the lower jaw. And he had ground these teeth off down to the gum on the labial side, his jaw wanted to come forward. It wanted to get away from that retrodiscal tissue. And so when we leveled it out and freed this up, this almost came forward on its own. We didn't have to use any class two elastics to speak of to get it over there. And when we got it out here, the pain went away. And that's what I'm trying to get across to most people that are having pain with their jaw joint. If you get there, get off of that retrodiscal tissue where you've got this vascular uh, area of tissue and with a lot of nerve endings and it produces this highly uh, viscous material that is so slick and actually carries nutrients to the disc tissue itself and you free that up where that's healthy their pain will go away it's more than a massaging and all this stuff that I saw in th what you do with TMJ pain uh, learn to go where the cause is and treat the cause of it and that helps uh, so I'm going to go on to the next and there's his lower jaw after we straightened it out when I lowered it there was room for these teeth you see they're crowded out and I straightened these up and his regular dentist crowned them before I got through with the man really now you look at where it is here that's the same blooming teeth. They had some new crowns put in over here. And uh, he is without jaw joint pain. And it's something that lasts. And uh, I hope you realize that to get off of that area back there, if you bring the jaw forward, it's jaw position and putting pain or pressure on the jaw. People that sat around like this and rest their head or sleep 
and the right fist and kick their jaw joint off to the side and put a lot of pressure on it and have pain with it. Some people, it doesn't hurt at all because they've got a lot of room back there and the retrodiscal tissue is not crowded by putting a little pressure here and they have no trouble. So you can see deep pipe people that have no problem at all and then you see somebody else that is giving them a devil of a time with them. Okay, we'll go to the next deal down here. Now this is another uh, case. <clears throat> this is actually Dr. Mike Hurley, who practices in uh, Hirsch, Texas, on Precinct Klein Road. And if you want to call him up and talk to him, I talk to him. He doesn't mind me using his name in this. And Mike, the first time I knew him, uh, we went out to dinner, and we were sitting there, and he was eating, and I noticed he would chew back here with his jaw back in this area He's, and he was chewing back here and then the next uh, minute I saw him I was looking at him he well he still got his jaw back here but then he moved his jaw forward and he would eat like this for a while with his jaw sticking out here and then he would go back and eat back where his teeth normally fit and I said, Mike, what, what are you doing? And he said, when I go back and chew where my teeth really fit together, they hurt. And so I have to advance my mandible over. I have to advance my mandible and then I have to take my teeth and uh, put them, put my jaw over here and my mandible can stay forward and that freed up his dis retrodiscal tissue, wasn't getting the pressure so it quit hurting right while he was eating. So he went back and forth. Now all we had to do to correct him, we never did get it fully done, is advance the mandible so that the jaw could be forward and could interdigitate, the teeth would fit together with the jaw in a forward direction like that. And so that was how it ended up. We never did get the maxilla as far forward as I'd like for it to be. Now he bit with it back. In other words, he had his lower jaw out in front here so much that the pressure up here moved these teeth out here away and had a space behind the cuspid in front of the first bicuspid and now when it goes back on the other way it puts more force on this so it got worse as this gap opens up right here and that's what happened in his uh, particular case and there's the upper teeth in line and here's the lower. So he's got this space on both sides. He bit with his upper teeth back here so much that he pushed these teeth forward even more. And that made it hurt more over here by pushing backwards on the mandible. And that crowded the retrodiscal tissue. So uh, I hope you're not tired of hearing retrodiscal tissue, but you ought to look it up on your computer and see what it does and there are videos on it there's a wonderful video put out by university there in sweden and you ought to watch that video it'll show you a different uh, condyle situation where they took cadavers and cut down to the joint and show you how it opens and closes and you can see them clicking and and uh, different movements of the jaw. It has been most helpful to me over the years. I think it was produced in 80, 1985. And it's been a very useful thing for people studying TMJ problems like that. So there's the way he we ended up with Mike. We brought his jaw forward and tried to do something with some Invisalign but that uh, 
uh, didn't bring it out either. So we used different things to bring the jaw forward. I think I covered some of it in the video. So this is the end of this uh, video, and I'm going to uh, sign off. I hope you're enjoying our uh, deal and actually subscribe to our channel. And I will close out now. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.